Dr. Bowman uh, started these dialogues between himself and myself at Ojai in California, the beginning of this year. And we, we had eight dialogues there and two here, if I remember rightly. So we had altogether 10 dialogues this year with Dr. Bowman. And so we are continuing that dialogue. We talked about Rather difficult to remember. <laughs> I have no memory of it, so it's rather. I think we asked, if I remember rightly. What is the origin of all this, of all human movement? Is there an original source, a ground, <coughs> that's right, sir? That's right. a ground from which all this sprang? Nature, man, the whole universe. Was it bound by time? Was it in itself complete order? And beyond which there is nothing more. And Dr. Bohm reminded me yesterday, we talked about order, whether the universe is based on time at all. I don't know if you're interested in all this, and whether man can ever comprehend and live in that supreme order. That's right, sir. I think that's rather vaguely where we stopped. I don't know if, if you're interested in all this, but Dr. Bohm and I, wanted to investigate, not merely intellectually, but also profoundly, how to comprehend or live from that ground, move from that ground. The ground that is timeless, that is, there is nothing beyond it. And I think we'd better begin from there. Huh? <laughs> begin from the ground. <laughs> so I don't know if you would agree as a scientist of eminence, whether there is such a ground, whether man can ever comprehend it, live in it, live in the sense not as something he living in it, but that living in it, that itself living. And whether we can, as human beings, come to that. That is more or less, if I remember what we talked about. Yes, 
Well, I, I uh, don't know if science, as it is now constituted, can say much about that. Uh, and uh, science doesn't talk about it. Uh, although but you, implicitly, scientists. But you, as a scientist, would you give your mind to the investigation of that? Yes. Well, I think implicitly, science has always been concerned with trying to come to this ground. By, uh, we discussed in Ojai studying matter to the greatest possible depth. And, but of course, uh, that is not enough. Is this too abstract? Huh? Hmm. It's hard to say. Uh, uh, I the, think. Uh, didn't we also? If we remember rightly, it's so long ago. <clears throat> As a human being mm. living in this world, which is such in turmoil, whether I can have that, whether there can be that absolute order first, as the universe is mm -hmm. an absolute order, and. comprehend an order which is universal. Yes. I don't know if I'm making my question clear. I can have order in myself by careful observation, mm -hmm. self-study, self-investigation, and understand the nature of disorder, and the very understanding, the very insight of it, dispels the disorder, and that's one level of order. Yes, well, that's the level that most of us have been concerned with until now. You see that the, we say we see this disorder going on in the world and in ourselves, and we say it is necessary to be aware, observe all that, to be aware of it, and as you say, to dispel but, uh, it. That's a very, very small affair. Yeah, well, we discussed that in Ojai, but I feel that you know, people generally don't feel it as a small affair. Ah. Uh, um, see, we've discussed it at great length, but uh, at first people feel that clearing up the disorder in themselves and the world would be a very big thing, and uh, perhaps all that's necessary. No, but, I mean, fairly intelligent and knowledgeable and fairly cultured human being, cultured in this sense, civilized. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can, with a with great deal of inquiry and uh, investigation, come to the point when in himself he can bring order. Yes, and then some people would now begin to say, if only we could bring that order into the whole of society. We will. If, human, if all of us in this room, if we're all tremendously in that inward sense orderly, mm -hmm. let's will perhaps create a new society. But that, again, is a very small affair. Yes, well, I, I understand that. I, I feel that you know, one should go into it carefully, because it is not, you know, people commonly don't see it as small, although a few have, you know, in seeing that there's something much beyond that. Much more beyond that. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if others are following this. Perhaps a, a thing would What might be worth uh, thinking about would be uh, why is it that uh, it is not enough to go into this order of man and society? You see, why say just uh, produce orderly living? Let's put it that way. Yes, orderly living. Uh, in what sense is that not enough? You see, you, you feel it's very small, but I mean what? Because we live in chaos, to bring order, we think that's a tremendous effect. Yes, I, that's agreed. Right? It looks very big. Huh? It, it, from, from the present state of disorder, yes. it looks very big. Very enormous, but in itself it isn't. Yes, could you make it a little more clear why it isn't? Oh, yes. I think it's important not to... All right, sir. <laughs>
because I can put my room in order. Hmm? So that it gives me certain space, certain freedom. And I know where things are, I can go directly to them. That's a physical thing. Can I, as a human being, put things in myself in order, which is not to have conflict, not to have comparison, not to have any sense of any sense of me and you and they and you know all that, which which brings about such division, and out of that division grows conflict. That's simple. Yeah. Right, if I am a Hindu, and you are a Muslim, and we are eternally at war with each other. Yes, or in every, in every community, we, people fall apart in the same way. Yeah, in the same way, come, uh, whole society breaks up there. Yeah. So that if, if one understands that, and profoundly has, uh, realizes it, that's it finished. Yes. Now, then suppose we say we have achieved that, then, then, then what? That's what I want to get on. Yeah. I don't have their interest in that. You see, I think some people might say it's so far away that it doesn't interest us. Wait till we achieve it before right. we worry about let the us, other. Let, no, but <laughs> you and I, this was a dialogue between you and me, yeah. not with... No, but I meant just for the sake of trying to uh, lay, you know, make sure everybody here sees it before we go on to see what the question is. All right, so let's start. Hmm. I'm in disorder, physically, psychologically, and around me, the society in which I live is also utterly confused. Uh, inju there is a great deal of injustice, a m miserable affair. Mm -hmm. And I can see that very simply. I can see my my generation, past generations and generations have contributed to this, and I can do I can do something about it. That's simple. I can say, well, I put my house in order. Myself is the house. Mm -hmm. My house must be in order before I can move any move further. Yeah. Well, would you say that? This question, suppose somebody says, my house is not in order, so before I worry about that, I'll I, put right. my house in order. I'm, my house is, is in disorder. Yeah. Let me put that into mm. order, mm -hmm. which is fairly simple. If I apply my mind and my heart to the resolution of that, mm -hmm. uh, of that question, it's fairly clear. But we don't want to do that. Well, that's another question. Or yeah, we find it tremendously difficult. We are so bound to the past or to our habits and to our attitudes, and we don't we don't seem to have the energy, the courage, the vitality to move on. Yes, yeah, well, that's what's not so. It doesn't seem to be so simple as what will produce that energy and courage. You know, what will change all this. I think what will change all this, as we discuss the, at Ohai, is to have this insight into all this. Yes, I think that really is the key point, that without insight, nothing can change. Nothing can change. So even if we try to bring order in daily life, if, without this much broader insight That's right. into the very root of it, or into the That's right. ground of it. Now, is that insight really alter my whole structure and nature of my being? That is the question, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Then it seems to me that, see, uh, what was implied was that it, if we look at a rather small question, like the order of daily life, it will not involve your whole being. No, of course not. And therefore the insight will be inadequate. Yes. So. What is insight? We talk, discussed that mm -hmm. too, great deal, and we talked about it gathering here and 
and it so on. But do we go through that? Well, just sum it up, I think, too. I mean, uh, because uh, I think it would make it more intelligible. <laughs> Could we start with being tied to something, being tied to a belief, to a person, to an idea, to uh, some habit, some experience, which inevitably must create disorder, mm -hmm. because being tied implies dependence, uh, the escape from one's own loneliness, fear, and all that. Yes. Now, to have total insight into this attachment, which then, the, that very insight clears away all attachment. Yes, I think we were saying that the self is the center of darkness. It's, it could be considered to be like a center creating darkness in the minor clouds, and the insight penetrates that. It said and would dispel the cloud so that there would be clarity, and therefore this problem would vanish. Vanish, that's right. But it would take a very strong, intense insight, a very uh, Yes, but that means... Total. that That's right. But... but I, am are we willing to go through that? Or my attachment to or my tie to something is so strong hmm, that I'm that I I'm unwilling to let go. Yes, but then what hmm? then what? And that's what most people are. Yeah. It's only I think unfortunately it's only very few who want to do this kind of thing. Um, yeah. Now, we are discussing the nature of insight, whether that insight can wipe away or banish, dissolve this whole movement of being tied, attached, dependence, loneliness, all that, with one blow, as it were. <laughs> I think it can. I think it does, when there is profound insight into this thing. That insight is not mere memory, the the movement of memory, knowledge, experience, which is totally different from all that movement. Yes, well, it, it seems that it's insight into the whole of disorder, into the source of disorder. Yes. Of all disorder, a psychological nature, not just, say, attachment or greed or... Yes, yes, all that. Yes, so that uh, with that insight, then the mind can clear up and uh, then, we, then it would be possible to approach the cosmic order that... That's what I want to get at. Yes. <laughs> That's much more interesting than this, because this is all rather uh, immature. Sorry, for you forgive the word. It is any serious man must have must put his house in order, right? And that must be complete order. Not order in, in a particular direction, but order in the wholeness of man. If that, is, if that can be done, and if that is necessary, because society as it is, disintegrating and is destructive and all the rest of it, and it destroys human beings. It's a machine that is destructive when it's mm -hmm. And if, I'm, if a human being is caught in it, it destroys him. Yes. Right. And realizing that, any ordinary human intelligence says, I must do something about it. 
not just sit back and talk about it. Yes, well, just to finish the thing, I see most people might feel doing something about it consists of, say, solving particular problems mm. like attachment or uh, uh, you know, removing disagreements between people or something, you see. No, the that. particular resolution of, of the pro particular problem and its resolution is not the re resolution of the whole. Yes, so that's the key point that uh, if you find the source what generates this whole, which generates this whole, then getting at this source, at this root, yes. is the only way. That's right. Because if we try to deal with the particular problem, it's still always coming from the source. The source is the me, mm -hmm. Yes. The source, apart from the great source, well, the little source, yeah, which, the little pond, <laughs> the little stream, must dry up. <laughs> yes. Well, the little stream confuses itself with the great one, I think. Yeah. And, and we're not talking the great uh -huh. stream. Yeah. The immense movement of life. That's, we're not that. We are talking about the little me with little movement, with little apprehensions and so on and so on. That is creating disorder. And as long as there is that, center, which is, which is the very essence of disorder, unless that is dissolved, there is no order. So, at that level it's clear. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they are all like this. Can we go on from there? Yes, I think so. Now, I'd like to ask, is there another order totally different from this? This is man-made disorder, and therefore man-made order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, both. Both. It's the chaos and the cosmos is man-made. Well, not the real no, cosmos. No, no, a big one. Cosmos is, no. Yeah. No, the real... But I mean, the order which we see in the room, the microphone, see the television is man-made which is a high degree of order, and then also we see all the fighting going on. It's man-made. The man-made the terrible programs put on this orderly television system. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> so after realizing that, seeing this order, which, uh, which human mind can bring about in itself order, then it begins to ask, is there some an order which is totally different of a, of a dimension which, which is necessary to find, because this is so mm -hmm. small affair. Yes. I put my house in order, all right, then what? And it, uh, perhaps many of us do it, we'll, be, we'll have a better society, a better etc., etc. But yes, that is admitted, that is relevant, that is necessary. But that has its limitation. Mm -hmm. Yes, eventually people won't be able to be satisfied with that. No, they'll I'm, get bored with I'm it. I'm not the one who is not. Although, it's, as you're saying, we have to have it. Yes. Now, how do we find, how does a <clears throat> human being who has really deeply understood this order, this order made by human beings, and therefore affecting society and all that. He says, is there an order that's beyond all this? Yes, and how do we get into that question? Yes, yeah, how do we get... I mean, human mind isn't satisfied merely having physical, social order. It has its limitations. Hmm? It has its boundaries. Mm -hmm. And says, yes, I understood all that. Let's move. Yes, well, even, say, in science, men are seeking the order of the whole universe, uh, looking to the, what they feel to be as the end or the beginning. Yes. Or to the depth of its structure. Uh, not, not in order to... Uh, 
get useful results, but because the question fascinates them. Yeah, and this is not a fascinating question. No, but I'm saying it does. It, the, for the, yes. It interests them, let's put it. Yes. Uh, and I think, uh, perhaps I was thinking that men have been seeking the absolute, and, uh, and the word absolute uh, looks, means uh, to be free of all limitation, of all uh, dependence, dependence, of all imperfection, yeah. apparently. Of all motives and all the rest. Yes. yes. And, absolute. And so the absolute has been the source of tremendous illusion, of course, because the limited uh, self seeks to uh, capture the absolute. Of course. I mean, uh, that's impossible. <laughs> But that's the common... Uh, of course, of course. But uh, supposing we recognize that the absolute is a very dangerous concept or, uh, when the mind tries to grasp it, and yet it seems to be, uh, in some sense, what is necessary, you see, that uh, in the sense of freedom, that uh, there could have been... Uh, freedom could only mean the same as absolute, you see. That, yes, yes. <laughs> because anything which is dependent in any way is not free. So how do we approach this? Hmm. How do we answer this question? As a scientist, would you say there is an, uh, there is an order which is beyond all human order and disorder? Yes, well, I would say it. I don't think that a scientist is, is particularly significant in the sense that science has not, may be seeking this sort of thing, but it really has no more to say on it. It is not able to say anything on this question because any order discovered by science is relative. Of course, because their, their own egotism comes well, well, not only that, but also what, uh, the information we have is limited. Limited, quite. And we can only say it goes so, so far. Uh, so are we moving to a world of either illusion, mm. Mm, because demanding it mm -hmm. may, be cre may create illusion. I feel it does create illusion that, that if man demands the absolute and tries to of course, uh, satisfy of course. it in thought, of it course. creates illusion. But not I'm knowing, not asking that question but, from that point of view. But not knowing what to do, men have uh, felt the, uh, the need for the absolute and then not knowing how to get it, they have created the illusion of it in religion and in science or in many other ways. So what shall I do? As a human being, as a human being who is, who is the totality of human beings, I, there is order in my life. My life, um, it is, it, that order is naturally brought about through insight, and so perhaps will affect society. That, we mm -hmm. move from that, and my um, the the inquiry then is: Is there an order which is not man-made? Yes. Let's put it that way. I won't even call it absolute order or any kind of. Uh, well, at least it's free of man's. Construction. Yes. And, uh, now we have the order of nature, the cosmos, which we don't really know oh, in its depth, but we could consider that to be that sort of order. I mean, the very word cosmos means order. Yes, it's the Greek word for order. Yes. As a nature is an order. Yes. Unless man interferes with it, nature is an order. Yes, well, nature... Has its own order, we won't say that. Yes, it has its own order, and even what we call disorder in nature is part of the order. Part, part of the order. It's not really disorder. No, no. We call it disorder, but mm -hmm. in itself it's not a disorder. All right, finish with that. Mm. Now, let's move to something else. Man has sought a different dimension and perhaps use, use the word order. He has sought different dimensions because he has understood this dimension. Mm -hmm. 
He has lived in it, he has suffered in it, he has gone through all kinds of mess and misery. He says, I've come to the end of all that. I mean, not verbally, actually mm. come to the end of all that. And you may say that very few people do that, but, but this question must be put. Yes, I could ask, um, what is the significance of this question to, say, the, the vast number of people who have not gone through that? I should quite follow. Well, you see, we're, we're putting this question. You say the man who has gone through that may put this question, right? But then, is it of any interest to the one who hasn't gone through it? Yeah, I think it is. Well, what is it? Because he sees, even intellectually, he may see the limitations. Of yes, so that's important for him to see. Even before he has finished yeah. up with it, yeah. it's important to see this point. See, right? yeah. Not to say, wait until I clear it all yeah, up and then look at it. Of course not. would be too stupid. Hmm. So what? How, how does the mind approach this problem? I think man has struggled to find this out, sir. I mean, all religious people, you know, so-called religious people, have attempted to grasp this. The mystics, mm -hmm. the saints with their illusions, all the rest of it. But they have tried to understand something which is not all this. Does it come about through, if I may use the word, me meditation as measure? Yes, well, we discussed that here in Brockwood, that the original meaning of the word meditation is to measure, to ponder, to weigh the weigh. value and significance. Of course. We means to measure. Yes, and, uh, but in, uh, I think meditation would mean to measure in some deeper sense than just with a ruler. But no, no, of course. But uh, even so, perhaps uh, <clears throat> that may have been meant that such a, a measurement would only have significance for seeing <clears throat> that there is <clears throat> disorder. That that's, that's what I would say. Yeah. Measurements can exist only where there is disorder. Yes, and, uh, but that by looking at the measurement, at the at the way things are out of proportion in the mind, you can see there is disorder, right? Yes, yes. But that, that is not the, the order, of course. No, no. That's, so, he, I'm, you, I'm, we are using the word meditation not as measure, mm -hmm. or even to ponder, or think over, but a meditation that is, that's the outcome of having kept, um, bringing about order in the house and moving from there. Right, so say we can, we, I think we, that people may have used the word meditation <clears throat> in the distant past to indicate that by looking at measure you can see disorder as being out of proportion, but they may have meant to go on from there. Yeah, but they don't seem to somehow. Well, they, at least people don't generally do it. That yeah, let's try to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, uh, perhaps a preposterous statement, but <laughs> let's see. So, see, if we see that things are in disorder in the mind, then what, what is meditation? That's yes. it, that's... 
But first, I must, mind must be free of measurement. Yes. Otherwise, well, I can't an, enter into the other. Well, that's an important point to say that uh, the, almost the instinctive reaction of seeing this disorder, see, this disorder is itself a, a, a disproportionate this, measurement, yeah, me and therefore the, ten, the instinctive tendency is to try to make the measure come right, you see, to correct it. Correct it, quite. And well, that may be the fundamental mistake. We right? said that. Yeah. We said it. I mean, all effort to bring order into disorder is disorder. Yes, and that, and that way it's... This is very different from what almost everybody has been saying, you see. Yes, yes. Over the whole history. History, I know, I know. Uh, we are, perhaps we are, <laughs> except. Well, maybe there are a few who have implied it, you see. Yes. I think that a few, it's implicit in what a few have said, but it yes. has never been said explicitly to my knowledge. <clears throat> All right, let's say explicitly <laughs> say it. Uh, uh, so we say that, the, see, that's the attempt to control, as you've said, is wrong. You see, that it, it has no meaning. Right? No meaning, yes. And now if you say there's no control, what do we do? Ah, no, no, no. Hmm? If I have an insight mm -hmm. into the whole nature of control. Control is measure, you see. It's, uh, oh, of course, control is measure. Mm -hmm. That liberates the mind from that from that burden. Yes. Well, could we? Could you uh, sort of explain the nature of this insight? What it means? Uh, we said that the insight implies it is not a movement from knowledge, from thought, and therefore remembrance and all the rest of it, but the cessation of all that, and to look at it. Look at the problem with pure observation, mm -hmm. without any pressure, without any motive, all that, to observe this whole movement of measurement. Yes, I, I think we, we can see that, that measurement is the same as becoming and of course, all that. All that. It's, uh, uh, that the attempt of the mind to measure itself, to control itself, to set itself a goal, and compare so on, compare itself, all the rest of it, yes. is the very source of the disorder. <laughs> that is the very source of disorder. And in a way, that was the wrong turning way, a way of looking at this wrong turning, that man extended measurement from the external sphere into the mind. Yes. Now, But now we say, see, I think the first reaction would be if we don't control this thing, it'll go wild, you see. That's what somebody might fear. Yes, but you see, if I have an insight into measurement, that very insight not only banishes all movement of measurement, there is a different order. Yes, it does not go wild because well, it doesn't go wild because it has begun in order. On the contrary, yeah, that it's really the attempt to measure it which makes it go yeah, wild. That's <laughs> it. The measurement is <laughs> wild. Yeah, is confusion, right? Now, let's proceed after establishing all this. Can this mind, through meditation? Perhaps we are using the word meditation without any sense of measurement, comparison, and all the rest of it. Can that mind find an order, a state where there is no where there is a recipe more positive, where there is something which is not man-made. Because I have been, one has been through all the man-made things, right? And yes. there are all limitations, there, are, there is no freedom, there is chaos, there is mess. Yes. And well, what would you say? When you say you've been through man-made things, what are they? Huh? When you say you've been through man-made things, what are they? Oh, everything. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, like religion or...? Like religion. Science, yeah. uh, worship, uh, prayers, anxiety, sorrow, attachment, mm, detachment, and loneliness, and suffering, and confusion, and ache, and anxiety, loneliness, 
all that. Yeah, it's also all the attempts to by revolution and by other of course men. physical revolution, and, psychological yeah. revolution, all that. Those are all man-made. And so many people have put this question. Obviously, must have. Mm. And therefore, they say God. Yes. Which is another concept, and that very concept creates disorder. Yes, well, that's clear that uh, man has invented God and uh, uh, given him the power of the absolute. And uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Quite. laughs> which is himself. <laughs> which, he, which then becomes himself. Yes, and therefore it becomes the. Chaotic. It, dom it dominates him. Yes, yeah, of course. I've, one has finished all that. Hmm. Right? Right. Now, what? Then the question is is there something beyond all this which is never touched by the human thought, mind? Yes, now that makes a difficult point. Not touched by the human mind, right? Yeah. But mind might go beyond thought. I mean, the word mind might... That's what I want, yes. I mean, then, it, then what do you mean? You see, do you mean by the mind only thought, feeling, desire, and will, or something much more? No, that's for the time being. We've, we have said the mind, human mind, is all that. But it's not the... Uh, the, the mind is now considered to be limited. Right? No, no. As long as the human mind is caught in that, oh, it is limited. Yes, and the human mind has pos potential. Tremendous potential. But it is not realized now. It is yeah. caught in thought, feeling, desire, That's and will, and right. that That's sort of thing, right? Yeah. All right, so then it, we will say that which is beyond this is not touched by this limited sort of mind, right? Yes. Now, what will we mean by the mind which is beyond this limit? Now, first of all, sir, is there such a mind? Yes, that's the first question. Is there such a mind that is actually not theoretically or romantically or all the rest of that nonsense, actually said, I've, I've been through this? You mean you've been through the limited stuff? Yeah, right? yeah. I've, and being through it means finish. Mm -hmm. Can can that is there such a mind? Or because it has finished with it, or it thinks it has finished with it, therefore creates the illusion that there is something else. Yeah. Ah, I I won't accept that. I, as a human being, uh, one person or X says, I've been, I've understood this, I've seen the limitation of all this, I've lived through it, and I've come to the end of it. And this mind, having come to the end of it, is no longer the limited mind. Mm. And is there a mind which is not, which is totally limitless? Yes. You, you follow what I mean? Yes. Yes, now that raises a question, you see, of how the brain is able to uh, be in contact with that mind, you know. Say, say, which one? What is the relation between that unlimited mind and, that, and the brain? And right? we, first of all, I won't be clear on mm -hmm. this point, it's rather interesting for going to it. This mind, brain, the whole of it, the whole nature and the structure of the mind includes the emotions, the brain, the reactions, the physical mm, responses, and all that. This mind has lived in turmoil, in chaos, in loneliness, and has understood and has a, had a profound insight into all that. And having such a deep insight cleared the field. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
this mind is no longer that mind. Yes, it's no longer the original limited yeah. mind. The not origin, not no longer the limited mind that you began with. Uh, damaged mind, right? Yes. Let's use the word damaged. Mind. A damaged mind, also damaged brain. You say that that this damaged mind has been the same working has damaged the brain, right? Yes, all right. So we have right. both the damaged mind and damaged the damaged mind. Damaged mind means damaged emotions, damaged brain. The damaged cells themselves are, yes. are not in the right order. Right? No, quite. But when there is this insight and therefore order, the, the damage is undone. Yes, we discussed that the, yes. in the previous time. Good, yes. I don't know if you agree to that. Either. Yes, well, I see it. I, 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 Certainly, you see it's possible. You see, by reasoning, you can see it's quite possible because you can say the damage was done by disorderly thoughts and feelings, which overexcite the cells and disrupt them. And now, with the insight, that stops, and a new process yes. is. It's set like up. going and person going all for the for fifty years in a certain direction mm -hmm. and realizes suddenly that's not the direction. Yes. The whole brain changes. It begins. It changes at the core, and then the yes. the wrong structure is dismantled and healed. Yes. That may take time. That's said, right. But the the insight, which uh, is the factor that will take. Which, yes, and that insight is not uh, does not take time. Time. That's right. But it means that the that the whole process has changed at the origin. Now again, that mind. The limited mind, with all its con with its consciousness and its content, and all the rest of it, says, "I've, I've been. Through, it's over that part." Now, there is, is there, is that mind, which has been limited, hmm, and having had insight into this limitation, and therefore, trans moved away from that limitation. Hmm, Is that an actuality, a something that is really tremendously revolutionary? You follow what I mean? And therefore, it is. It is no longer the human mind. Forgive me yes. for using that word. Well, that's. So, I mean, that requires. A, I think we should clear that up. That what we mean by the human mind. That human is, mind, which is the. <coughs> With its consciousness, which is limited. Yeah, that limited consciousness, which is conditioned and uh, yes. not free. That is ending. Yes, that, that is. Uh, uh, so, and that is the general consciousness, which has been the case. I mean, not just in individuals, but it has been all around. All, of course. Not. I'm and not talking about an individual. That's yes, silly. yes. Uh, I think we discussed that. That the the individual is the outcome of the general consciousness, yes. a particular outcome, rather than an independent. Thing. You see, that's one of the difficulties. That's one of the confusions. And the confusions is we take the individual mind to be the concrete actuality. Yes. <laughs> Whereas yes. we've been discussing, it's necessary to consider this general mind to be the actuality from which the individual mind is formed. Yes. Yes, and that's all very clear. And now you're saying, but now we say we move away even from that general mind. Yes. But what does it mean? It and the particular and mind. And the particular mind. Now, if if one has totally moved away from it, hmm, then what is the mind? Yes, and what is the person? What is the human being? Right? Yes, yeah, what is a human being then? Yeah. And if what well, then what is the relationship between that mind, which is not man-made mind, and the man-made mind? Yes. I don't know if I'm making much Yes, well, we had that this. Uh, we, did, we, did we agree to call it a universal mind? With or, or would you prefer not to? It is not yet. I don't that. like that word universal mind. There are lots of people used it. Yes. Let's use a much simpler word. Well, it's the mind which was not made by, uh, by man. Man. I think that's simpler. You keep yes. it to that. And the mind which is not made by man. Neither individually nor, to, nor in general. Generally, generally or individually, is not made by man. Is that so? I mean, can one 
observe really deeply without any more prejudice and all the rest. Does such a mind exist? You follow what I'm trying to say? Yes, now what, let's see what that means to observe that. You see, I think there's some difficulties of language here because, uh, see, we say one must, a person, or one must observe and things like that, whereas... I observe it. Yes. I observe. Yeah, now what, who observes? You see, that's one of no, the problems that comes up. That's, we've been through all that. Yeah. Um, there is no division in observation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not I observe, but there is only observation. Observation goes, takes place. Yes. Would you say it takes place with, in a particular brain, for example, or a particular brain takes part in the observation? See, because I would say... Ah, ah, ah. All right. I know that you're catching this. Hmm. No, sir. It yes. doesn't take in a particular brain. Yes, but it seems that a particular brain may uh, respond, you see. Of course, of course, but it's not case brain. Let's no, be... well, I don't mean that. I mean... Uh, uh, see if we try, what I mean by the word particular brain is, you see, we could say that given the particulars of where a certain human being is in space and time or whatever his form is, not giving him a name, <laughs> is distinguished from another one which might be there, there. <laughs> Look, sir. Yeah. No, uh, let's be clear this point. <clears throat> we live in man made world man-made mind, man-made and all this. We are, we are the result of man-made minds, our brains and so on. Brain with all its responses and not the actual... Uh, well, the brain itself is not man-made, but it has been conditioned. Conditioned by uh, man. Man-made conditioning, right, right? right? That's what I mean. Now, can that mind Uncondition itself so completely that it's no longer man-made. Yes, uh, that, uh, that's keep, the question. Yes, that is the question. Let's keep it to that simple level. Well, with can can that mind, man-made mind, as it is now, can it go to that extent to so completely liberate itself from itself? Yes, of course, that's a somewhat paradoxical statement. Of course. No, that's uh, paradoxical, but it's actually it is mm -hmm. so. I mean, I can see. Wait, let's begin again. Mm -hmm. I can, one can observe my, the consciousness of humanity is its content. Mm. And its content is all the man-made things. Uh, anxiety, mm -hmm. fear, and all the rest of it. And it is not only particular, it's the... General. General. Yeah. Having had an insight into this, mm -hmm. it has cleansed itself. Of yeah. That. Well, that implies that it was all it was always potentially more than that, but that insight and enabled to be free of that. Is that what you're? That insight, I won't say it is potential. Yes, you see, uh, well, there's a little difficulty in language that if you say the brain or the mind had an insight into its own conditioning and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. almost you're saying it became something else, you see, that's yeah, what... Yeah, I'm saying that, yes. I'm saying that. Right, okay. The insight transforms the man-made mind. Yes. So that it's, but then you say it's no longer the man-made mind. It's no longer. Uh, that insight means the wiping away of all the content of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Right? Not bit by bit by bit, the totality of mm -hmm. it. And that insight is not the result of man uh, endeavor. Yes, but then uh, that seems to raise the question, where, where does it come from? <laughs> All right. Where does it come from? Yes, in the brain itself, <coughs> in, the, in the mind itself. Well, which, the brain or the mind? 
I know mind. I'm talking mind, yeah. the whole of it. So we say there's mind, right? Just me, just me, sir. Let's go slowly. Something mm. interesting. Let's go slowly. The consciousness is man-made, general and particular. And logically, reasonably, one sees the limitations of it. Then the mind is, is gone much further. Then it comes to a point when it says, can all this be wiped away at one breath, one blow, mm -hmm. one, one movement? And that movement is inside, the movement of inside. Mm -hmm. It is still in the, in the mind, yes. but not of, born out of that consciousness. Yes. I don't know if I make yeah. But then we're saying the mind has the possibility or potential of being, yes. moving from beyond yes. the consciousness, yes. but we haven't actually done much of it. Yes, that's right. Of course, it must be a part of the brain, a yeah. part of the, the mind. The brain mind can do that, Yes. but it hasn't generally done it. Right? Yes. Now, having done all this, mm -hmm. Is there a mind which is not, not only man-made, which is man cannot conceive, cannot create, it is not an illusion. Mm. Is there such a mind? I don't know if I make my clear. Well, I think what you're Saying is having freed itself, the mind has a, generally in particular a, a freed it from the general and particular uh, structure of consciousness of mankind from its limits, and now this mind is now much greater, and now you say is this mind is raising a question. Right? Is this mind is raising the question? Which is what? Which is? First, is that mind free from the man-made mind? Yes. That's the first question. Yeah, it may be an illusion. Right? Illusion. That's what I want to be, when I speak very clear. Mm -hmm. No, it is not an illusion. I mean, mm -hmm. because he says measurement is illusion. Mm -hmm. He knows the nature of illusions. Born of de wherever there is desire, there must be etc. etc. Illusions. Mm -hmm. And illusions must create limitation, and so on, and so on. He's, he's, he's uh, uh, not free only understood it; he's, he's well, over. He's free of desire. Yeah, say. free of desire. That is the nature. Hmm. I don't want to put it so brutally. <laughs> free of desire. But it's full of energy. Yeah. Yes. Now, is so. This mind, which is no longer general and the particular, and therefore not limited. And this limitation has been um, broken down through insight, and therefore the mind is no longer that, a conditioned mind. Right? Yeah. Now, then what is that mind? being aware that it's no longer caught in illusion. Yes, but we're saying it was raising a question yes. about whether there is some much greater... Yeah, that's why I'm raising the question. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Is there a mind which is not man-made? And if there is, what is its relationship to the man-made mind? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is very difficult. Hmm? We're supposed to we'll go on? Well, if you feel up. Oh, I can go on. This is fine. <laughs> we'll go to quarter to one. A quarter to one, is that yeah. good, yes.
every form of assertion, every form of verbal statement is not that. Right? So we are asking, is there a mind which is not man-made? And I think that can only be asked when the other, th when the limitations mm. are ended. Yes. yes. Otherwise, it's just a foolish question. Well, it will be the same. I mean, just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mean, that becomes theoretical nonsense. Well, it's uh, part of the man-made structure. Right, of course. Of course. <laughs> So I mu one must be absolute. I mean, I'm using the word. One must be. Well, I, I think the word absolute can be used, uh, you know, if we're very careful. <laughs> very careful, yes. Absolutely free of all this. Mm. Then only you can put that question. When you put that question, not you. When that question is raised. Is there a mind that is not man-made? And if there is such a mind, what is its relationship to the man-made mm -hmm. mind? Now, is there such a mind first? Of course there mm, Of course sir. Mm -hmm. Without being dogmatic or, or personal or all that business, uh, there is. But she's not God. Right, well. Because God, we've been through that. Yes. Yeah. Part of the man made structure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which has created chaos in the world. Mm. There is. Then the next question is what is, if there is such a mind, as, and someone says there is, then what is the relationship of that to the human mind? Yes, to the man, man-made mind. Yeah, to the general, particular and general. Has it any relationship? Yes. Well, you see, the, que the question is a difficult one because uh, you could say that the man-made mind is pen is pervaded with the illusion. No, it's not a, most of its content is not real. No. So, so this is real. Yes. I mean, we'll actual, use the, whatever. We'll use the word real in the sense actual. Yes. And that is measurable, confused. What is this? What is it? Has this relationship to that? Obviously not. Well, well I would say a superficial one in the sense that uh, the, or, the man made mind uh, is, has some real content in a certain level, the technical level, of, say, the, the television system well, and so on. Yeah, but, so in that sense, in that area, there could be a relationship. But as you're saying, that is a very small area. But fundamentally... No, as we discussed, remember, sir, yeah. the man-made mind has no relationship to that. Yes. But that has a relationship to this. Yes, but not to the illusions in the man-made mind. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's be clear. Yeah. My mind is the human mind. Mm -hmm. It has got illusions, desires, and all the rest of it. And there is the, there is the other mind, which is not, which has no, which is beyond all limitation. Mm -hmm. This illusory mind, the man-made mind, is always seeking that. Yeah, that's its main trouble. Eh? Yeah, that is main trouble. It is measuring it, it is advancing it, mm -hmm. am I getting near our father, all the rest of it. And this mind, the human mind, the mind that's made by human beings, human mind, the man-made mind is always seeking that, and therefore it's creating more and more mischief, confusion. This man-made mind has no relationship to that. Yes, because from I'm obvious, obvious, obvious. any attempt to get that is the source I'm of obvious, illusion. Obvious, right? Absolutely obvious. Now, has that any relationship to this? Well, what I was suggesting was that uh, uh, 
it would have to have see that if we take the illusions which are in that mind, you know, such as desire and fear and so on, it has no relationship to that. No. Because they're any they're figments, anyways. Yes, yes, I understood. Now, but <coughs> to have a rela- but that can have a relationship to the man-made mind, if, in understanding its true um, structure. I mean, and how do you think, sir? That that mind has a relationship to the human mind. The moment is moving away from it from the limitation. Yes, but it, it, in, un- in understanding those limitations, yes. it moves away. Moves away. Then it has, a, then uh, that has a relationship. Then it has a genuine relationship yes. to what to what that other mind, to what this limited mind actually is. Right? Yes. Not to what it, not to the illusions as to what it, it thinks it is. Huh? Huh? Well, yes, the, clear. Well, that the right, we have to get the words right. That uh, the mind which is not limited, right, which is not man-made cannot be related to the illusions no, which are in the man-made really. mind, but it has to be related to, as it were, to the source of the illu- to the to the real nature of the man-made mind, which is which behind is, the illusion. Right? But which is the man-made mind is based on what? Well, on all these things we yes, said. Yes, which is its nature. Yes. Therefore, how can that have relationship to this? Even even basically. The only relationship is in understanding it, and so some communication would be possible. We're saying which might end, it, might communicate to the other I, person. No, I'm I'm questioning that. Yes, because you were saying that uh, the, the the mind which is not man-made may be related to the limited mind, but not the other way around. Right? I even question that. Yes, all right. Well, no, it's uh, changing that. Right? Yeah. No, why, I'm, why are you I'm just pushing it here. Yes, yeah, so you may or may not be so, is yeah. what you're saying, yeah. by questioning it. Yeah, I'm questioning it. I'm okay. Fine. What is the relationship then of love to jealousy? It has not. Not, not to jealousy itself, no, which is an illusion, but no. to the human being who is jealous, uh, there may no, be. I'm taking love yeah. and hatred. Let's yeah. do two words love and hatred. Love or hatred have no relationship to each other. No, not really. No, no not, no. not really. Except, all. Uh, I has... think that love might understand the origin of hatred, you see. That... Ah, that's a... might... Yes, yes. In that sense, I would think of a relationship. I, mean, I see you're using... I understand. You're saying love can understand the origin of hatred. Yeah. And how the hatred arises and all the rest of it. Yes. Is that so? Does love understand that? Well, I think, in some sense, uh, that um, it understands its origin in the man-made mind. You see that uh, that having seen the uh, having seen the man-made mind and all its uh, structure and moved away. So you are always saying, sir, that love. We're using the mm-hmm. word for the moment. That love. Has relationship to non-love? Only in the sense of dissolving it. I, I, I'm right. not sure. I'm not sure. No. Let's, we must be awfully careful here. Or the ending of itself. Mm-hmm. Which is itself? Well, an ending of hatred. Yeah. Hmm? The other is. Yeah. Not the other has a relationship. Mm-hmm. To the to the understanding of hatred. Yes. Well, we have to ask how it gets started. Then you see that. Uh, so oh, that's uh, very simple. No, but I mean the understand that if uh, suppose we say we have hatred, right? I have I have, I have hatred. Suppose yes. I have hatred. And, no, that's I can see the origin of it because you insulted no, me. No, well, I don't. But that's a superficial uh, notion of the origin. I mean. To say why do you, why does one behave so irrationally? You see, is the deeper origin that that see. There's no real. If you merely say you have insulted me, then I say why should you respond to the insult? Because all my conditioning is that. Yes, well, that's what I mean by it. Then you're understanding the origin of. The, the, I understand that, but is does love 
help me to understand the origin of hatred? No, but I think that someone in hatred, uh, you know, moving, understanding this origin and moving away. Moving away? Yes. Then the other is. Yes. The other cannot help the mo movement away. No. Uh, but, can, my... but the question is, suppose one person, if we want to put that way, one human being has this love, mm -hmm. and the other has not, right? Mm -hmm. And can the first one communicate something which will uh, start the movement in the second one? That means that the number A yeah. can influence B. Well, not influence, but but simply to. I mean, say what well, could raise the question? For example, why should uh, anybody be talking about any of this? You see, why I, should I talk about it? That's a different matter. It? That's a yeah. different matter. Yeah. <laughs> No, but the question says, which is, is hate dispelled by love? No, not that, no. Uh, or the understanding of hatred mm -hmm. and the ending of it, the other is. That's, that's right. But now, if we say that here in A, the other now is, right? Uh? A has reached that, the, you know, yes. the other yes. is, love is for A. And he sees B, C, D. <laughs> B is God, the other. Yeah. <laughs> now, when we're saying, uh, uh, what is he going to do? You see, that's the... What is the relationship between the that's two? That's the same question. I same mean, when question, you say, what, yes. uh, what, is, what is he going to do, is another way of putting it, right? I think we're... Just a minute, sir. I hate, another loves. My wife loves and I hate. She can talk to me, mm -hmm. yes. she can point it out to me, the unreasonable, and so on, so on, so on. But her love is not going to transform the Source of my hate. Oh, that's clear, yes. Uh, uh, except the love is the energy which will be behind the talk, I see. Behind the talk? Of, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, of but the, it will not, the love itself doesn't sort of go of in course, there and dissolve the hate. That's <laughs> romantic and all that business. Yeah. So the, the man who hates, that the source of it, the cause of it, the <clears throat> movement of it, having an insight, and the ending it as the other. Yes, but I think that say if, if we say A is the man who has seen all this, and he now has the energy to put it to B. Yes, yeah. it's up to B what. Happens. Of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> I think we better pursue this. Right. Uh huh. Close to what?